Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the IPFS uh, Core Implementations Weekly Sync for Monday the 28th of September 2020. I am Aking Brain, I will be your host. Uh, we are going to go through our uh, high priority initiatives, other initiatives, Q&A, parking lot, that kind of thing. It's going to be awesome, we're going to find out all the fun stuff that's going on in IPFS land. Uh, so to kick us off, um, upcoming and ship releases, has anybody shipped anything? Nope. Cool. All right. Well, maybe next week. Uh, uh, pinning services. Any updates on the pinning service? So uh, the update here is from me at least. Um, the IPFS client is like fully implemented. Um, and the only thing we're blocked on is trying to figure out how to start um, Andrews's mock uh, a prototype pinning service so we can test the client against it. So it's like circle CI type, type issues. That's it. Uh, yep. Uh, we shipped, I, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if I mentioned that last week, but we've shipped a small uh, patch release of the spec when we uh, renamed some fields uh, just to have this automatic regenerated uh, client uh, more like ergonomics of that client uh, more, more developer friendly and it does not change uh, the format on the wire so it's like backwards compatible uh, with uh, any pre-existing clients um, yeah I think that's it um, Oh, I, I forgot to mention, I shipped a thing. I shipped uh, an update to the IPFS NPM registry mirror, which is now using the latest version of JS IPFS and is currently rebuilding the enormous um, sharded directory of all of NPM. Um, check back in a month or something. Um, anyway, so uh, moving on, the ED25519 default keys. Um, Lido, your name is down against that. Uh, yeah, I kind of put an uh, update on uh, on the subdomain gateway section, but let me copy here as well. Uh, I've updated uh, docs for subdomain uh, gateway to include some code examples and best practices that uh, include the reality of GoIPFS 0.7, which uses uh, uh, those uh, keys as the, as the default. Uh, so now it should be more clear how to uh, Use them in sub in the like subdomain context to load websites, basically. Um, cool. Um, Seco removal. Uh, neither Adina or Jacob are here. I mean, that went in uh, 0.7 of um, GoIPFS. There's a PR open against JSIPFS, uh, which I'm going to merge um, later this week. Yeah, yeah. And then, Michael. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No problem. Um, yeah, so I would like to, I would like to get the TypeScript stuff in this week to JSIPFS and then hopefully ship that at the end of the week. And so that will go out with Circo removal. Um, that is that. Uh, no one here from, yeah, I just listened to like Ollie and his daughter like playing computers for like 20 minutes. I think he thought he was muted as well. Well, that sounds lovely though. It was very <laughs> cute. It was very yeah. cute. You know, you can oh, I can't to wait to play day. computers with my daughter. That sounds great. Um, yeah, no update for Rust. Uh, JS improved discoverability and connectivity. Hey, so uh, regarding the first part of it, the auto relay, which is the task that is mostly done by now. Uh, last week, uh, uh, Jacob reviewed and uh, we got merged the self-signed peer record update when uh, basically we bound, we get bind to, to a, a relay who, who announces our address on the network. And uh, then we do the identify push to update all the peers that we are connected to. 
saying that yeah we have this new peer uh, this new address that you can dial us or announce to other of your friends if you like so yeah with this uh i unblocked the follow the follow-up pr which basically is to find uh, other relays on the network for now this is only using delegated content routing uh, and yeah this is also ready for review jacob will be out this week so I hope uh, that in the next week I can get it merged into uh, going to the follow follow up, uh, which will be uh, we'll want to not announce the dre the local addresses, which is a, a thing that we currently do, and uh, it has also some other scenarios that has been problematic for users uh, in the browser, for example. So for this week, I want to create a proposal for how will we do this uh, announcing addresses in the context of local local addresses or no local addresses because there might be some use cases where people might want to announce local addresses. For example, if you are on a local network, uh, and uh, so basically my plan will be to only allow uh, nodes to announce local addresses if explicitly configured. Uh, in the libp configuration but yeah i will uh, need to think a little bit more about this and uh, create a proposal uh so last week i didn't have time to get to the connection manager overall epic so no update on that front and uh, regarding the rendezvous uh i basically got back to it uh, last week i refactored the open pr that i had to use the signed peer records that uh, finally we got uh, released on libp 0.29 and I also uh, refactored it to use Wind Data Rays, which we'll, we also did in the Lipid P0.29. Uh, and yeah, so my goal for the rendezvous is to have during this week uh, PR ready for review so that next week when Jacob comes back, he will review the both data relay stuff and uh, the rendezvous. And uh, with that, I will also start the integration of the Lipid P Discovery API to leverage the rendezvous and the content routing as I mentioned for the auto relay. Uh, and yeah, that's it for me. Awesome. Uh, while you're doing the update, a wild Mark Henderson has has appeared. Um, was there any is there any update on Rust IPFS? Or? Yeah, uh, it's a pretty significant update. Uh, the 0 0.2 crate has been released to crates.io. So it's officially official. Rust IPFS is available. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of thanks to the community and I think Renis and Dutash from Google deserve most of the praise and I'm just uh, hanging on the call and you know, posting notes. Uh oh. Is that <laughs> um hold on. Ah is that better? Yeah, you're okay. just a bit quiet. <laughs> All right, sorry. Yeah, um, again, the uh, the crate is out, and big ups to Jonas and Lukash for all their work over the past few months. And that's really all it for me. I'll post a link in the notes. That is very exciting. Okay, I think that's the end of the uh, high priority initiatives. Uh, On to the other initiatives. Um, so the main gateway. I know a lot of you just talked about it a little bit. Uh, in the context of the uh, keys, is there anything further on that? Um, the only uh, the only change is uh, clarification that we uh, in in the previous version of Docs we did not uh, highlight the fact that uh, subdomain gateways are fully com backwards compatible with path gateways. Uh, those new Docs uh, highlight the fact that you can just use uh, subdomain gateway as a drop-in, use slash IPFS or IPNS. Uh, on the root domain and go IPFS will automatically take care of converting CID to a case insensitive uh, base if it's uh, if the produce CID is too long it will use a uh, base 36 which makes uh, longer keys fit in a DNS label um, so uh, sort of like added uh, some additional context and best practices uh, to that uh, but that's about it Cool. Um, Unix of SV 1.5, uh, there's no update here. 
Uh, moving on to improving uh, web UI file add. Uh, yeah, uh, I've been working on that. I'm putting final UI touches on it and I should be done soon, hopefully today. Um, and the next item is also mine, but I have no updates for it about the TypeScript support. Um, the next one is mine, decomposing the CLI and the core HTTP uh, of IPFS so they're in separate modules. Uh, this is done, merged, um, not shipped. Sh it will ship in the next release. So that's cool. Uh, trying to bring NPM and IPFS up to date. So yeah, so I updated the registry mirror. That's all deployed. Um, and it, like the notable part of that is that it has libraries like shared modules with the NPM IPFS project itself. Um, so I want to try and run that against Core IPFS 0.7 so that we can then enable that in CI again as well and hopefully breathe a bit more life into that. There have been some people on uh, the GitHub repo who have expressed an interest in helping out. So I want to kind of get it into a point where I'm like, here you go, and here's the list of things that you need to do. Uh, that would be super cool. Um, that is that. Uh, okay, that is the end of the other initiatives. Um, Moving on to designer review proposals. Anybody got something they want to stick in a pillory and have examined in minute detail? Oh, these sessions are so much fun. Somebody want to design something. Okay, fine. Um, blockers and asks, anybody blocked or need to ask something? Questions? Hey, I have a, just a small thing uh, to the team. Um, now that the crate is out, we're sort of pulling down the throttle on Rust FPFS work for now. So I'll probably not be joining the calls for a period of time. Um, but I am returning to my natural habitat of OrbitDB. And I know there's been a number of team members that want to reach out and talk about that too. So please don't hesitate to get in touch. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to work on something like that because I'm going to be focusing on Orbit a lot in the coming weeks here. So now's a good time. Thank you. Well, I know Dean was uh, trying to run, we wanted to poke you guys about running the uh, Orbit DB test against GoIPFS 0.7. So I guess there'll be more of that in the future. Yes, that is part of the, in the that is in the cards. Excellent. I do have a, a question um, as far as the design is concerned. One of my upcoming uh, uh, tasks is going to be looking at moving pins into the data store. And I wanted to know if the design of that is um, how, how much more review do we need? And we need to re-examine that to make sure that, uh, that that is in fact what we want to do and we have a good strategy for doing that. So. Uh, that's just bringing that up as an issue that we may want to pay attention to coming up here in the next week or so. Okay, I mean, I guess, yeah, you'd um, hash that out with the Dean. Um, there's the PR to JSIPFS that kind of set out uh, the design for it, and there was a lot of back and forth between the Go team and the JS team. Um, so that's kind of the design document, I suppose. Uh, okay. And you can go from there. All right, great, thank you. Okay, uh, so no other questions. We can move on to the parking lot. Uh, I got a quick, not really a question, but like uh, invitation to a bike shed. <laughs> so uh, uh, Unix FS 1.5 was introduced in JSIPFS, but it's still uh, not in Go. Uh, so it would be nice to figure it out how do we want to uh, present those additional attributes in our IPLD Explorer. When you inspect uh, DAC PB uh, right now, it looks the same and you are not able to tell uh, that the modification uh, time or mode is different. Uh, uh, so if you've got any idea how we should represent that type uh, of metadata in uh, IPLD Explorer, there's a leash issue linked in, in the notes. Cool, please take a look at that. Oh, you could just implement 
Unix of SV 1.5 and go IPFS, which I guess wouldn't solve the problem, but like it would make the problem it more would visible. Put more pressure on the problem. <laughs> exactly. Cool. If there's nothing else, then this has been the one of the fastest uh, core implementation weekly things ever. Um, you get 10 minutes back. Um, thank you all for coming. Is anyone going to interrupt me? No, we're done. Amazing. Thank you all for coming. Uh, this has been the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync on Monday, the 28th of September. See you all on the internet. Stay safe, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.